WUAX88988. This car just came in today. It is an 89 foot flat car. Let's take a walk around. This is what's called an ambulance car. I shot a, a video just yesterday. Another car came, like this came in. It's uh, already been processed. But uh, you can see this is, um, that, that's called a truck bolster, right? This piece here, right? Uh, and that is the exact same thing that's on this rail car. Up underneath there is a truck bolster that goes across the rail car. Let's see if I can get a little better picture of that. No, you really can't see it. Well, it's that um, uh, that piece is essentially that piece right inside here. So what this car is designed to do is is uh, it's almost like a tow truck of of rail cars. So if there's ever a derailment, they would load that rail car up on that on these bolsters and haul it down. Then they would haul the wheel sets. You know, you know, this truck set here. They'll take that off and put it on that side for cars that have been involved in, in an accident or uh, they just can't they can't move on their own wheels for the for whatever reason and um, that bolster there is movable you can see that track that it slides on and go from the very end all the way way over here and that one is gonna be stationary okay so uh, it's always kind of interesting when these cars come in what we find on them like here, you can see this car has brand new chain, brand new um, ratchet binders. This car has some uh, brand new brakes as well. That's a uh, that's a uh, brand new right there. Uh, that looks, looks really good. This is a, a low-level car, meaning that the, usually on a standard car, the, the, the deck would be to the top of that coupler hump. This one, the deck is a little bit lower. Um, usually when they haul these rail cars, you know, this rail car on top of there is going to make the height of the entire rail car with a rail car on top pretty high. So in order to, you know, let's say they had a, a tank car upside here, uh, up, up on top. So the overall height of this entire rail car with its load is going to be pretty tall so they want to try to lower the, the height of this rail car otherwise they, they'll have a lot of restrictions on where they can haul this rail car uh, because of overpasses and bridges and tunnels and that kind of stuff so that's why they typically have low level cars and this one is a little bit special as well because it has these cute little 28 inch wheels on it okay so those are 28 inch wheels what's normal is usually like a 33 uh, that's by far we see what we see the most. Sometimes you'll see 36s, uh, and in uh, rare occasions you see some 38s. Usually those are on, like on tank cars, 125 ton capacity. Uh, not not too terribly common. But this car is in good shape. Uh, as you can see, we're looking at the corners of the rear car. Looks good. You can see this, uh, this little point right here. There's no damage there. This car is pretty cool because it has a. Uh, a sliding center sill which you typically see that on a box car it's a it's a top hat sliding center sill so it's essentially a, a center sill within a center sill so one center sill stationary and the other stationary uh, the other center sill slides back and forth okay I'll take a, I'll see if I can find an area where we can take a look at that a little closer and uh, you can see here if there's any damage it'd be here the car looks pretty good the deck looks pretty good plenty of chain and chalk tra in a in a ratchet binders that's a brand new uncoupling lever brand new indoor hose and of course whenever you replace an air hose just throw the old one right on top of the deck. Of course, that's the best place for them. Um, so you saw there's no damage on this car. It hasn't been sideswiped or, 
or anything. Let's see if I can find an area where I can show you with that uh, sliding center sill. So looks like there has to be somewhere over here I can show you. Probably over here by these brakes, maybe. Yeah, there we go. So you can see that hole there. You can see behind that hole there's another, there's some more steel, which is indicative of an inside center sill. You wouldn't have that. You wouldn't have that um, inside center cell or any kind of steel inside that center cell unless it's a sliding cell which is kind of odd just to see this on a uh, 89 foot flat car but uh, you can see that there are some um, there are some dings here to the deck and uh, we do have a video another video that talks about when are these deck dings significant you know that one's a pretty good size let's uh, take a look to see where that's at then you can watch my other video and determine if this thing is critical or not. I can't see my camera up there anymore, so hopefully you can see if that thing is critical. You should be able to tell. And I'll give you a hint. It's not that important. Um, this area here, there's there's no cross members here. This is exactly where, this is right over the wheel actually. You can see the wheel right there. That's the wheel, right? So sometimes when this car rocks, uh, the wheel rub there and obviously it's worn a hole through there. So there's no cross members here. So if we wanted to fix this, we would just, uh, looks like this has probably been repaired a time or two before. So we would just cut that out uh, and put a new piece of steel there. That's all, nothing major. And if this was going to be a pedestrian bridge or filled with gravel, it may not make that big of a difference. So that's all there is to it. So when we get this car, uh, when we process it, we'll take those stuff off. We'll, um, uh, we'll probably take most of the stuff off the deck here. Uh, we'll probably... Um, I'm not sure if we're going to cut this, this C-channel off here or not. Uh, we probably will. And then obviously we'll remove the wheels, the brakes, uh, the coupler, and uh, get ready to go. That's a brand new Ender hose there. This thing was cast in 1976. Good looking car. All right, that's all.